So now let's start getting into sectors, right? So let's start, oh, and this is just sort of a graph. It's a bit dated. Um, I think it's probably about five or six years old, but it shows the share of private versus public investment in various sectors, right? Uh, so the yellow is the private, as you can see, uh, and the, the blues are public investment, but public investment again can be central government or state government, right? So that's sort of the split there. Uh, so you look at so, you know, sectors like irrigation, it's almost completely public. Right? So most of it is government supplied infrastructure. Water supply and sanitation also almost completely public. Right? Um, th at the time electricity was quite public and now it's becoming a bit more private. But then when you come to some of these places of infrastructure like ports, right, it's highly privatized. Right? Many of the ports are privatized. Telecom, of course, you do have BSNL and we'll talk about that later. But you know, we all know there's Geo, there's Airtel, there's uh, you know, whoever, a lot of it is privatized. Uh, the roads, there's quite a bit of privatization. So you can see that in transportation, right, which probably all of these fall under transportation, uh, you have quite a bit of privatization. All right. Whereas on some of the other sectors, there is less privatization, water and sanitation, etc. We'll get to those and there's reasons why there's less privatization, but there's a little bit of a spectrum. At one point, all of this was blue, right, light or dark. Now we're starting to see more yellow coming. It isn't as if yellow is a good thing either. Right? There are issues with privatization, so we'll have to look into it. But as we can see, we're expanding uh, infrastructure. So transportation, all right. Do we need more transportation infrastructure? So the point is, it's, there is a quantity that we've got to look at. Uh, there's also quality of the infrastructure that we'll have to look at. And uh, in transportation particularly, there's something that we like to call about, call, call the mode of transportation that we should look at. So your point is uh, that you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be these large expressway kinds of systems. Perhaps we can invest more in public transit. There's a choice that we have to make, right? But by and large, Right. The question is, if there is, if we all agree that there is a need for transportation infrastructure, where is that need? What do you, what do you think we need to do? Okay. So one is, uh, so how do we do that? So one is, uh, we, we try to eliminate congestion. How do you eliminate congestion? Widening of roads. Uh, uh, widening of roads, fine. Widening of roads and, uh, well, mass transport. Mass transport, elevated corridors. All right. All of these are solutions. Okay. The push towards transit oriented development is the whole mass transport uh, kind of agenda, right? But essentially, the point is if you take traffic congestion, there are a number of things that you can do about it. Some of these things are possible, some of these things are desirable. So, for instance, widening of roads in an urban setting that may not even be possible. Right. So, for instance, if you just look at the road outside IIT Madras, Sardar Patel Road, we've already got to a point where there are no sidewalks. Right. If anyone's even tried to walk from our outgate to cancer hospital or uh, Gindi Park or whatever, you are uh, at in any given moment, you are at risk of being mowed down by some uh, motorist. Right. So now if you say widen the road, there is no other option except to start encroaching on space uh, from IIT on one side and uh, you know whatever is on the other. So some of it may or may not be possible. Right. So widening of roads from in a highway context, it may be possible to go from a two lane highway to a four lane highway because there is land by the side of the road in, in some cases, in some cases there isn't, in some cases uh, you can't. Uh, mass transport, again somebody said transit oriented, well we will get to transit oriented development in a, in a bit. But mass transport again saying look, one of the ways of easing traffic congestion is take people out of individual vehicles and put them into buses. And so there are these lovely pictures, uh, may, we might get a guest speaker who will show these pictures showing a very congested street or very congested road with cars, etc. And then a road with the same road with three buses. And essentially saying all of those people that you see in that picture could be accommodated into three buses and the road is a vast expanse of emptiness, right? So mass transport is highly desirable, but requires, uh, you know, first of all, a lot of behavioral cultural change, right? People need to sort of ag accept mass transport and of course needs to, needs that infrastructure to be developed, right? So you need, if, I mean, I have no problem in taking mass transport, but I would like the buses to have a certain frequency that they stick to, in which case it probably is better for me. But if I don't do that infrastructure improvement, mass transport doesn't work. Elevated corridors, again, they do solve part of the problem. Uh, but they are also very expensive and so there is a little bit of a trade off between how much money do you want to spend. So there, as you can see any of these aspects of infrastructure, right? even something as simple as removing congestion and if we brainstorm more I am sure we will get more ideas. 
right, has, you know, there are lots of debates surrounding it and it becomes very difficult to say what should I do, which of the three should I do, uh, right, which works best, etc. right. So good, so but what are we doing about it, right, so again specifically, you know, or, or yeah, let us go back to the, the question of what, what are some of the challenges and what are we should be doing about it. Right. And by the way, transportation does not mean roads alone, right? Essentially, transportation is a is a bunch of things. Transportation often is roads, uh, urban as well as expressway, rural, etc., air, uh, ports, as well as uh, waterways and stuff like that that are often used to transport goods, right? So rivers and all of that all come under transportation. Right. So dedicated freight corridor. Why do we need a dedicated freight corridor? What purpose does it serve? Yeah, so there's a, there is again a whole, there's a lot of thinking on uh, freight corridors, essentially roads where uh, goods travel rather than people, right. So we have, so you know, roads essentially move both people and goods, right, but goods are more expensive and contribute in greater numbers to the economy, right. And so can we not have better sort of freight corridors. So again, there is, there are schemes in government, right. For instance, we do have a dedicated DFCCIL, I think it's called dedicated freight yeah, corridor. Uh, so there are schemes where we are trying to build freight corridors. So again, I think the, the point is, so you know, we've talked about transportation, it's divided into a number of categories. If you start looking at some of the numbers, right, you'll find that there's lots of these increases everywhere. So for instance, rail and road freight traffic, which relates to exactly your point on the dedicated freight corridor, so are going to grow at 12 and 8 percent per annum, right. So, uh, and to achieve about a 50-50 in total, uh, so or half of freight traffic will go on rail, half of freight traffic will go on road, but these are going to continue to increase. So, if you are saying we have a problem now, right, that problem is only going to get worse because the traffic is sort of going to increase, all right. Similarly, passenger traffic is, about, is expected to grow at 15 percent per annum. Right? More people are going to be mobile, more people are going to have access to vehicles, but more people are also going to need to travel more because of lifestyle, etc. So the point is what we are saying today is if you are saying there is congestion on the roads today, it is only a problem that is going to get worse if you do not intervene. Right? It is not at, it is not anywhere close to a steady state. Right? So as a result of which we really need to obviously gear up in terms of building better infrastructure, uh, you know, rail passenger traffic again expected to grow 9 percent per annum. So it is not just road. Right. So we have to sort of look at how do we augment railways, we all, right. So obviously and that is because there is a shortage. Now on the other hand, you go to a place like Western Europe, right, you just walk to the station and you buy a ticket, right. And trains are relatively, in some cases that are quite empty, they sometimes have the opposite problem I feel where, you know, they are running too many trains without probably making enough revenue off the trains, right. But we sort of need to be somewhere. So the point is that transportation infrastructure, everything, air traffic, right, everything sort of going up the roof, right. Again, passenger throughput at Indian airports in 2011-12, which is five, six years ago now, was 162 million and this number is just going up, right. The total cargo handled by the ports was 914 million tons with a cumulative an, uh, annual growth rate, right, of about 9%. Right. So, we are handling large amounts of cargo and that number is just going to keep growing up, right. And more people are moving into cities, there is a lot of rural to urban migration, so your congestion problem is only going to get worse, right. So, existing infrastructure is inadequate and the, po the problem is that needs are growing, right. It is not a st uh, sort of a static target that we need to achieve. As and when we achieve these targets, those numbers are going to be higher. So, it's, uh, so essentially we have to aim to be somewhere beyond where we need to be today, right. So a lot of infrastructure uh, is needed, lots of schemes ongoing. So we talked about a few, what are some of the transportation related schemes that you recall? So somebody said NHDP, National Highways Development Program. So that's an elaborate program to develop all kinds of national highways. And so generally you have classifications of roads in India. You have national highways, you have state highways, you have major district roads, et cetera, et cetera, right? So national highways essentially are interstate for the most part, uh, connecting large cities, et cetera. And that is something that's a big program of expansion that we're going on, both for passenger and for freight traffic. We've been doing it for several years. There's quite a bit that's been done. Uh, it's actually now quite nice to travel in various parts of India because you can actually drive through. So Chennai to Bangalore, for instance, is uh, used to be a nightmare, is now a breeze. In fact, probably driving is the best way to get to Bangalore today, right, rather than flying or, you know, taking the train or whatever it is, uh, right. So the National Highways Development Program has worked on developing highways. So that's one uh, scheme. It's still in progress. We haven't finished developing all our highways yet, but that is, uh, that is one flagship scheme. Uh, part of which is the golden quadrilateral, the Bharat Mala. So the golden quadrilateral was essentially north, south, east, west, right. So you wanted to sort of connect all four, uh, you know, sides as well as the diagonals, if you will, 
so you had the north south and east west corridors and uh, so all of so that was one that was the first phase of uh, uh, one of the first phases of the national highway development program and then of course there are a whole series of roads that have been built so nhdp is one flagship scheme particularly in the road sector right what are the schemes you already talked about the pradhan mantri gram sadak yojana right that's something that's happening more at the rural level right other than uh, roads so there are there's an interlinking of river project which is sort of in various stages of uh, debate uh, there is also there is also an inland waterways authority right and we are trying to sort of see if many of our waterways can become navigable uh, right primarily for again goods transport etc can be done through sea so certainly there are some you know in in sort of incentives and schemes in the waterway transportation sector right what else have you heard of in transportation udan scheme for airports right so we've been talking a lot about airports as well again we have these major airports uh, then we have these minor airports and now we have this udan scheme that incentivizes uh, you know development of both air uh, incentivizes airlines incentivizes airport providers right so in the air aviation sector we're looking quite a bit at improving the quality of our uh, airports in many parts of the country uh, right what huh? so yes yeah, so from an urban transport perspective we are betting quite and a quite a, in quite a big way on uh, metro rail systems and again i won't touch on metro rail today because when we talk about urban infrastructure i think it makes more sense to discuss it there but i think by 2030 there are about 50 cities in india that are supposed to have some form of metro rail or, or the other right in terms of some might actually have connected networks others might have metro rail projects in various states of con of uh, construction but about 50 indian cities are probably going to have as per the plan uh metro rails by 2030 right so that's again a uh, sort of our thinking in terms of how do we bring in mass transport right so our bet today is on metro rails as the provider of mass transport of course there's a huge debate some people say look metro rail is extremely expensive and uh, carries fewer people than a good bus transit transit system right and people will point to bogota in colombia which has a an extremely well functioning bus rapid transportation system and uh, so on and say you know if you have dedicated bus corridors etc you can actually have um, and and building uh, bus rapid transport system is far cheaper you just need to buy buses right you don't have to build the roads for the buses whereas for the metros you have to build the entire infrastructure whether it's above ground whether it's underground you've got to build stations viaducts all of those kinds of things so there's a bit of a debate but we've chosen to go the metro route right in many cities okay so that's something else uh, yeah so there are a number of these kinds of schemes uh, dedicated freight corridors we've talked about in rail we have had the national rail vikas yojana we've talked about the nhdp pmgsy right so mentioned a few of these this is a snapshot of uh, nhdp it was split into several phases the first couple of phases focused on the golden quadrilateral and the east west north south corridors then we started looking at four laning six laning uh development of express ways which are like the freeways in the us so currently on our highways anyone can get on and uh, get off anywhere right so you can pull over etc but if you went to the us and you went on a freeway there are certain exits and therefore your speeds are much faster etc so there's this notion of building express ways and so there's a there's a huge sort of phased program of roads that we were uh, planning to build etc right uh, the northeast for uh, for a variety of infrastructure uh you know sectors is of great interest because there if at all relative to india that area is least developed right and so there are some extra incentives to actually develop in the northeast uh there's something sort of quite interesting called the central road fund right and the what the central road fund does is it says that there's this tax that you pay on diesel and petrol which goes into this fund and monies from that fund are then used for developing infrastructure particularly rural roads uh right where it becomes difficult to finance those roads right you can have a toll road you know in connecting two major urban centers because lots of people will go back and forth they'll pay toll right but in rural areas is very difficult okay and so you have uh you know these central road funds so the point i want to convey is we need a lot of infrastructure right but we have done some of our homework as a country right we have some data right we are in sitting back right we have a number of schemes right and there's only a partial list right and in some ways a dated list right if i haven't updated this before i came into this class but there are number of other schemes that we are talking about these schemes have massive allocations so it's not like we're doing nothing right in fact we're doing quite a bit right in infrastructure all oh, these yes. all right all of this okay uh, airports privatization etc and i won't necessarily and there are all kinds of incentives etc right mm -hmm.